Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again, he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, he will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to the other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, did you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, I'm going to begin by telling you a story from a former assignment of mine. I will not tell you the name of the parish to protect them. You know, I don't want to incriminate them. And uh, it did not take long once I got to this parish to uh, size up a few things. And one of the things that I sized up after just a couple weeks of being there was that at one of the masses there was a particular couple and the wife on the way out of church always made a point to stop to talk to me and complain about something. It only took a couple weeks to figure that one out and as time marched on quickly I uh, would see them I'd focus on them coming down the aisle through the vestibule to the door of the church and I started to brace myself for what was going to happen this week. You never knew what it was going to be. And uh, probably in a short period of time it started when I would see them at the altar looking out during mass. I would just focus on them and think in fear, you know, what is it going to be today. And I remember one particular Sunday where my entire focus changed because through to form, the uh, lady on the way out of Mass complained. And her husband, who was a very kind and humble man, changed my focus. He said, Father, I truly apologize for what my wife does to you every Sunday. But remember, you have her for one hour, I have her seven days a week. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it completely changed my focus <laughs> to uh, mercy and compassion, you know. True story. Well, the simple question today, what is it, what is it that you focus on? What do you focus on? In that story, that woman definitely focused on everything that was wrong. It was the focus of her life. And uh, her poor husband, I think he focused on damage control. You know, how am I going to get us out of this one? And uh, in just that one relationship, my focus changed from fearing what I was going to hear next 
and probably having a look of terror on my face to uh, genuinely having uh, compassion uh, for both of them that uh, her life was filled with such negativity. What is it that you focus on? If you really think about it for a moment, we, we eventually do become what we focus upon. I want you to think about that for a second. Whatever we focus on is eventually, more often than not, what we become. The old story of the glass half full or half empty, some truth to that, the way we might answer that question or statement. And if you really think, for the majority of us, if we, we focus on looking for pain or, or loss, we focus on what is wrong, ultimately, we're probably going to become a pessimistic person. And uh, if we look always to do what is right, what is correct, well, we're going to eventually become a, a person filled with great justice. And if we, we always focus on what is going right, we look for the, the positive, in any moment, positive news, ultimately we will be a person filled with joy. More often than not, we really do become the person we focus upon. And why is that important? Because the, the second reading, Paul's letter to the Philippians, you know, calls us to focus today. Of course, Philippi, a, a beautiful city, not a slouchy address. If you lived in Philippi, I said this a couple weeks ago, you know, you were doing all right commerce area. Very few Jews living in Philippi, and so Paul, in uh, preaching the gospel, the early Christians more often than not were Gentiles, not Jews. And what is he calling them to? He's saying, what are you focusing on? Don't worry about anxiety. We hear about that in the beginning. But uh, halfway through the reading, he gives six things to focus on. He says, First of all, focus on whatever is true. Second, focus on whatever is honorable. Third, focus on whatever is just. Fourth, focus on what is pure. Fifth, focus on what is lovely. And sixth, focus on whatever is gracious. And Paul is saying, focus on these things. And Paul goes to the point to say, Focus on me, Paul. Focus on me, on what you have learned from me. Focus on what you've received and heard and see me do. Focus on that. And if you focus on that, then you're going to focus on Christ living in and through me. And you will be focusing on Christ. So the simple question, what is it that you focus on? We become often what we focus upon. In 25 years of being a priest, I've attended many conferences and retreats, some that I was the participant in and some that I was the leader of. And uh, I can tell you both from my experience as being a participant, the focus that I go to that conference or retreat with is often what I take away from it. And I can tell you, and directing countless retreats, especially among some of our young people, you know, whatever focus they come with is often what they go home with. You know, we can either go or lead a conference or retreat and think this whole experience is going to be dumb, stupid, and boring, and most likely you're going to go home being fulfilled <laughs> that it was dumb, stupid, and boring. You can go to a conference or retreat thinking, you know, this is going to be a wonderful moment for me to embrace my faith and, and listen and learn more about how I can be a baptized member of the body of Christ, then most likely you're going to go home with a renewed zeal and insight uh, as to how to live your, your life. Do we focus really on living the gospel and embracing the truth of the gospel or do we embrace what is wrong with our church? And maybe the church needs to change that. We'll become whatever we focus upon. And what is it that we're called to focus upon? The vineyard. The first reading, the psalm, and the gospel all talk about the vineyard. And uh, 
we know very clearly God is the owner of the vineyard. And we certainly know that Israel is the vineyard. We heard that very clearly, especially in the refrain of the psalm. And uh, we know that Israel was the cherished vine. And we know that God created this beautiful vineyard, and we heard how it was built. And God then took Israel from Egypt, planted them in the promised land in the vineyard. And what do we hear about the vineyard? We hear that it's collapsing. Why? It's not producing good fruit. And what Isaiah the prophet is trying to tell them, you are the vine, you are living the vineyard, you're planted here by God, but you're producing bad fruit. And Isaiah foresees what actually happens, that eventually it will collapse. Jesus picks up the story in the gospel. We hear the same beautiful vineyard being created. We know it's still God's vineyard. And uh, this time, who is being challenged but the leaders of the people, the scribes, the Pharisees, why? They are not producing good fruit. And we hear that uh, Jesus goes to foreshadow his own death. Eventually, uh, send my son, the listen to my son. But they think, he is the one who will inherit it all. Let's kill him. The inheritance will be mine, foreshadowing his death at the hands of the leaders of the people. Well, you and I, we are in the vineyard today, and uh, we are vines in the body of Christ. So the simple question really for us to ponder today is what type of harvest are you yielding for Christ? And what really is the focus of your life? What are you becoming?